All right, everyone, we are looking at my uh, Wonder tier list for the base game, Seven Wonders Duel. Uh, I made this tier list a while back, um, and I'm making it again for December 2023. So going into 2024, you want to make sure your strategy is sound, and the very beginning thing you choice for strategy you make in the game is choosing your wonders. So let's dive right in. The top card, the most important card, is the base game. So you're going to be putting the Temple of Artemis at the very top. Um, the next most important might be the Hanging Gardens on some occasions. You get your, your three points and six coins, but more likely it's going to be Piraeus. I think most people would agree the base game, Temple of Artemis, is the best. Maybe not everyone would agree that Piraeus is the best, but um, uh, it's the second best, but I used to think Piraeus was the best. And then I realized getting those 12 coins is pretty useful. So we'll say the top three in the S tier, those ones. Next up, the A tier. Guess what? They're all going to be extra turns. So we've got the Appian Way, kind of the, uh, the little brother to the Hanging Gardens. But instead of costing wood, it costs everything else. And it becomes very, it's very expensive to build. Um, and so that's the issue there, but, uh, it makes your opponent lose three coins and gives you three coins instead of giving you a whole six coins. And the main reason why you take this one's for the extra turn. It just is unfortunate. It's a little bit more expensive, but a great one anyways. And then the Sphinx, six whole points. You could get a ton of points with this one. You could grab the six points and then you maybe got it with, uh, you have an affinity for glass. And then you grab the, uh, what's the, the palace, or what was that age three card that gives you seven points? Yeah, you go grab that, and then that ends up becoming a 13-point turn. Just boom, boom. So Sphinx, really great, and uh, people should be afraid of you having the Sphinx, too, because you could end it in points. Um, but I think the other strategies, the science and the military, uh, would favor you having coins rather than points. And Temple of Artemis definitely allows you to mix it up and do all of the different strategies. You could even turn those 12 coins into points, um, and, but you could make a military jolt, you could do a science jolt. Uh, yeah, so that's just an analysis of your extra turn wonders. And yeah, don't think I missed any. So next up, we're going to be looking at the... Um, the non-extra turn wonders. So, you know, some people say that the best one that's not an extra turn is Mausoleum, um, but I would say the Great Library in the base game is the best, I would say. I think it depends, right? If uh, Law is not out there, Great Library becomes pretty important. You could grab Great Library and grab Law. If Strategy is not out there, you could use Great Library to get Strategy early, early, and to make all those H2 military cards be a, be a three shield or a two shield instead of a one or a two respectively. And then uh, use, but Mausoleum could also grab a science card that's been discarded in age one and give you the progress token that you need if it's out there. So it really depends on what are the five progress tokens that are out there that decide which one's better. What I would say if law is not part of it, um, then, or, uh, then I would put uh, uh, Library ahead of Mausoleum. Now, if Theology is not part of it, then you need to look at the rest of your wonders, because if this is your only non-extra turn wonder, Theology is going to do nothing for you. But if you have two other non-extra turn wonders, sacrificing the Great Library so that you can get Theology and thus getting two extra turns, may be useful, but recognize only one of those extra turns you're going to use because the other one uh, has a chance of being discarded because you can only build seven wonders in seven wonders duel and your opponent builds four, you lose a wonder. And uh, you just made that uh, dumb pyramids wonder a an extra turn and then now it, it gets disappeared. So there's a little bit of a weakness to taking theology with great library. However, I have a video on this channel where I lost somebody who uh, they, I was totally with an advantage to them. 
look up in my channel the great library video i guess or the beware the great library i think it named it or something yeah my opponent pulled off a uh a really cool win and i had to record it and that was a uh they took they had no extra turns i think they think they used one but then they they had that situation where they used uh, the great library and then they had two extra turns for the rest of the game and I wasn't about to construct all four of my wonders, so they ended up being able to have an advantage of extra turns over me. Um, yeah, it's just not my playstyle to build all of my wonders. So, next up, we're looking at uh, the C tier ones. I would say both of the ones that you can destroy a card of your opponent's. Circus Maximus is nice because it has its own personality, where it makes your opponent not want to take gray cards, or take a bunch of them to offset the one you're going to destroy from them. So it makes your opponent dance. That's fun. But what really makes your opponent suffer is when you destroy the one brown card that your opponent needed and that you have a lot of, and your opponent doesn't have Caravanistry, you are sitting pretty. So two H2 cards that you want to be careful with building these two. This guy, you want to be worried about your opponent getting Customs House, because then they won't need to worry about gray cards, or even its little brother, the Forum. But uh, this one you want to be worried about, the Caravanistry, because each of those are ways to beat these two. But yeah, there's been plenty of games where points were eat close, and then I grabbed this card, or, or uh, constructed this wonder, and destroyed the stone that my opponent needed. They had a, a two stone, and I had a single stone, and then I made every single time they needed to spend stone the rest of the game be three coins per stone. It was beautiful, but... Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely make them. Oh shoot! I thought I had two stone. I I grabbed that shelf query and oh man, I lost my double stone and now I have uh don't have the the stone that I need for the next stage. That's very exciting when that happens. So this one makes your opponent dance and it's cheaper to buy. This one, if you do need to pull it out for a points win, this one makes your opponent suffer. And I've even heard people say that this one is even better, and maybe even like a B tier. But I just like to the cheapness of the uh, the Circus Maximus. It's nice. Um, and then next up, um, the Colossus. A you know anytime you can get shields, that's the real thing. That's great. Uh, you could use that as leverage to win in military. If you end up with all three of these military wonders, then you're going to have a good chance at winning the game in military. But the problem is you need that other fourth wonder to be an extra turn wonder and you need to use that at the right time so that you can get uh, the, the military cards that you need to win it. So pretty difficult, pretty difficult to win in military anyways in the base game. We're just talking the base game here. But Colossus is there, sitting at D tier in, in, in uh, the base game. Maybe I'll put it at C tier actually because these two are in their own kind of category, the the uh, Great Lighthouse and the Pyramids. Just really terrible in the base game. Maybe, maybe this is a C tier in the base game. Maybe somebody can pull that off the Great Lighthouse. But a lot of times what I find is people build the Great Lighthouse at the very end. And if you're, if you're building it in the last, you know, five or four cards of H3, you're not really using the Great Lighthouse for its benefit. You're just using it for the four points. You can get a lot more points at the end of the game doing something else. I know what you're saying. You're saying you're going to build the Great Lighthouse and build it early so that you can have a advantage for resources the rest of the game. Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to do that because it costs two papyrus. That's very expensive already. And while you're trying to juggle getting wood and stone and then the, the two papyrus, your opponents are going to be grabbing all these other great cards, and you're going to have to battle it out between uh, who's going to get the best cards. And then something's going to come up where you're not going to be able to construct the great lighthouse, and you're going to say, "Well, you know, it's maybe this card's better to get." And you see Caravansary, which gives it's a yellow card, so that's going to be one extra coin per discard, and it's the same exact ability to the great lighthouse. And you're already thinking, "Oh, I like that ability." I'm just going to grab the Caravanistry and have that extra coin as well, rather than building the very expensive Great Lighthouse. And then lastly, we have the Pyramids. Gives you nine points, and um, that's all it is. 
it just opens you up to being able to win in points if it comes down to it in points at the end. But uh, but a lot of the times uh, you you may not have needed those nine points. You really needed to struggle and fight your opponent in science, but because you didn't do that, now they either now have a points advantage because you had to you had to struggle and, and worry about blocking them in science or blocking them in military, and now they're at an advantage against you in points, or they beat you in military or science, and then it didn't matter. Now it could be said, could be the case that you have a huge points advantage against them. And you did what you needed to do to block your opponent in military or in science. You already have the points advantage. Why do you need to build the nine points? You only need one point more than your opponent to win the game in points. You need nine more uh, or military shields to beat your opponent in military. One more point to beat them in points. So, often if you already have that one more point, then just keep on that higher level. Yeah, keep keep having one more point than them. Sometimes you're sitting pretty at like 10, 20 more points than your opponent. This becomes useless to you. Yeah. So it's it's very rare that uh, it's important to needing to build the pyramids. There may be some time when you win by eight points, and it's because you built the pyramids that you that you won. But you could have gotten that from a different card. I mean, these wonders have some really cool game-changing abilities. There are cards that can give you nine points. So, yeah, just something to think about. You may want to uh, to build your wonders more for an, an ability that the cards themselves cannot give you. And that's why I guess I will put this one down in D tier. The Great Lighthouse, yeah, it's just it's just not there for me as far as uh, being better than a card. These two are about card level. These ones become a little better than cards with these military wonders, C tier level, because I can get the the shields from the military cards, but accumulating more points like these two doesn't really do anything for me. Accumulating more military cards, uh, more shields, does do something for me with military cards, because every successive military shield that I get gives even higher and greater advantage. Not just the points, going from two points slightly winning, uh, five points uh, in the middle, and then ten points majorly beating your opponent. Also, at the, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, Winning the game, yeah, after that ten point threshold, like uh, when you hit their capital, all that thousand points in your in your, if you're an AI playing the game and you're looking at your evaluation function, um, yeah, call the military win like a, a thousand point turn, and then uh, and then make it it makes it seem like okay, yeah, ramping up and up and up and up in points as we as we decide. As, as we go along the trajectory of whoa, where, where we want to go. So you get a little bit of points, a lot more points, a lot more points, and then you take that ninth more than your opponent, bam! Uh, same thing with science, like these two. We'll put the science victory. You could take that one science you need from the discard pile. Um, maybe get a progress token. This one you could get lost, so these ones become like that science strategy. And then these ones with the extra turns allow you to play any strategy you want to. So. It's kind of cool how they have them set up. They have the extra turns, which allow you to do whatever you want. These ones, which are generally science, but maybe could work for a military. Um, could even work for points. I like the ability, the great light, or library, four whole points, and a progress token that could be a seven-point progress token for a total of uh, 10, no, no, 11 points, right? That's huge. Yeah, you, you, you want to get a... A great library and get get eleven points rather than take a great lighthouse or a uh, great lighthouse for four points or a uh, even a pyramids for nine points. Just just construct the uh, the great library. It's one more resource, so a little bit more expensive, but you could do a lot more things with that, and uh, at the very least get points, but at the greatest get a science victory. 
mausoleum science victory. So all strategies, science, maybe a little military, military, then points. That is how uh, I look at them, and that is how I would rank the uh, different base game wonders. So thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you thought this was useful. If you do, I'll make more tier list videos. Um, but have a great day.